yourself? Okay, now comes the real science. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is David. And I'm here to give you a biologist perspective. I'm a, I'm a professor of evolution biology at Pennsylvania State University in the States. But I'm not American, I'm Irish. I want to make that point. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you can judge me differently and hopefully positively. Um, is that so, a bi biological notion? Pardon? Is that a biological notion? It is a, a perspective from, from a biologist. Um, so we're all in our, 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 the media, the game industry, uh, Hollywood is extremely interested in this dystopian view, this idea that life in some way is going to come crashing down around us. So it's really familiar to us. And Danny Boyle's image of 20 days later in, in this apocalyptic scenario in London where it was deserted really encapsulates that for me. Why are we so interested in this dystopian view? Why are we interested in the world coming crashing down? Well, undoubtedly it's because we live in a very hot, crowded world. We are hot, flat and crowded. This idea that we are now racing towards 8 billion people. We have 7.5 billion people. And the Netherlands, of course, is a country well, well accustomed to having high density populations. But now we're seeing this on a global scale. And all of these are leading to scenarios that could um, uh, transmit diseases in ways we haven't had before. But of course, we have had situations where diseases have been rampant in our society. So this is a picture from London in the 1640s, which was squalid and miserable. And of course, things have cleaned up ever since. But these were the very conditions that led to massive pandemics, such as the Black Death. And this is uh, Amsterdam in uh, 1632, just before you went into this large construction of canals. And at that time, there was a massive uh, outbreak of black plague, which is a, a bacterial disease um, transmitted by fleas and rats. And people at the time blamed the canal system, the excavation of the massive excavation of the canal system in 1663. People blamed that for this large uh, reduction in population numbers. 10% of the people in Amsterdam at the time died. And then from Amsterdam, it went to London, and you transmitted the infection that way. And roughly 10% of the people in London died as well. A catastrophic loss of life at that particular moment in history. Currently, we still have huge population centers. Uh, London, where we were just two days ago, is uh, dense and overcrowded. And every time people get onto the underground, they're just pushing up against huge numbers of people. And all of these are scenarios for disease infections. So you can imagine if someone gets off a plane from Hong Kong, carrying something like SARS, which was the case 10 years ago, at least in that case it's into Toronto, somebody goes, goes on the underground because they're being a regular tourist, passes infection to somebody else and somebody else and somebody else, and soon you have an epidemic within London, and then tra traveling out of London, exactly as happened before, to other cities. And these are the, uh, the seeds of a pandemic, and these are the things we're all absolutely frightened of which makes the Dutch transport system much better, of course, because this is a far healthier way to get around the city. Because here we have children exposed, uh, so you have much less in co uh, contact rate between individuals, and consequently have the, the seeds for infection are, are not so pronounced. So, of course, the, 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 the Hollywood is taking this image, and of course the gaming industry is taking this dystopian view and asking what the world would be like. So this is the, the naughty dog interpretation of a of a post-apocalyptic future, which doesn't look that bad, actually. There's a lot of elements in here which are in intrinsically biological. You're looking at water bodies and trees and verdant life. So all of this is appealing to what's called a biotypic view, this idea of, um, of, of our innate sense of biology and our innate understanding of scenes which make us calm. There's a reason why people like to go playing golf. I, I don't imagine anybody in this room likes to play golf. But there's a reason why many people spend a lot of money to go to areas of rolling hills, lakes, and trees off in the distance, because that reflects our ancestral condition in Africa, where we let use of these, these vistas appeal to us. And in this case, where we have a city being overrun by vegetation, this is also something which is relatively appealing. But of course, this is a, a post-apocalyptic scenario. And the reason is, is because you have infected individuals. So unlike other scenarios, you have uh, an infection, in this case, coming from a fungus. And the reason I'm here is because that's exactly what I work on. I work on a fungus, exactly this fungus. I work on a tropical rainforest, as I'll emphasize in a moment. 
And the, the developers of the game just saw this on the web and uh, thought this would be a good idea to integrate into the, into the game. It's not the typical zombie <coughs> flick. So I'm also a consultant to the Brad Pitt movie, World War Z, uh, where we've been talking about uh, viral infections and how you might see zombies behaving. So just like in Danny Boyle, it's an, un, it's an, un, um, uh, it's an undiagnosed virus. It in some way gets into the human population and then run, run rampages. What the Naughty Dog people have done is something I think a lot more nuanced and a lot more um, uh, uh, biological. They looked at this scenario of a fungus moving into humans, and there are many other examples of parasites moving into humans, and they've asked what would happen. Here are some of the screenshots from the infected individuals. I let the Naughty Dog team speak about those in detail. But none of these are viral, all of these are fungal. And this is the fungus from which it's, it's, it's come. This is the, uh, the Cordyceps unilateralis fungus. This is a real life fungus which infects ants, controls their behavior, and makes them die, in this case, on the underside of a leaf in a tropical rainforest in Thailand where I, where I work. Can I have the video of this? And this is the original video from the David Attenberg from the BBC series that some of you may have seen, which is a time lapse video showing a fungus growing out of the back of the ant's head and this is taking place over about seven days. This ant is well and truly dead. There's no behavior, there's no zombie behavior. The zombie behavior came beforehand. It was, it, the ant was in, literally instructed to die in a, in a location where the fungus needs to grow and to reproduce. So in the real world, in rainforests, you do have parasites perfectly manipulating the, the brains of their hosts in order to get to an ideal location to die. Uh, next video, please. And, and you can see this much more beautifully in this video, which is going to show you a cricket, which as you can appreciate are terrestrial organisms, so they're happy running around the woods. In this case, the cricket is motivated to a water body, which happens to be somebody's swimming pool uh, in the French Pyrenees, and it jumps into the water. The reason it jumps into the water is that an enormously large parasitic worm in its body is controlling its brain, literally sending chemicals from the back part of the cricket to the front part, making the cricket seek out water bodies. All of this happens at a particular time in the evening, uh, around about 12 o'clock at night, in certain months of the year. So you have a, a natural selection acting on the parasite's genome to, to produce behaviors which literally drive the, the cricket to commit suicide because once it jumps in the water, it doesn't get out. Now we should see another video now in a moment. So what we've been able to do when we studied this was to look at the, the certain proteins that these, these crickets are producing, and there are proteins which are precisely docking at certain, sec cer certain areas of the brain of the cricket, uh, causing, causing the crickets to essentially feel incredibly thirsty. So they're seeking out water because they're, they're literally dehydrating. Uh, next video, please. Now these parasites which are inside the body of these crickets, they might be there for about a year, and so they're driving the host around the environment. These things happen in the real world. And you can imagine if sometimes the environment takes advantage of you. So this frog is eating the cricket. The cricket was on the way to the swimming pool, driven there by the parasite, and it got eaten by the frog. So what the parasite is able to do is crawl out of the stomach of the frog and out of its host and then escape. So these, these behaviors are, 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 are so precise that the parasites have even evolved the ability to get through obstacles, um, not the similar I imagine to the game. And uh, this is the fungus, I also video. Um, so this is showing you the ant on the other side of the leaf, biting deep into the tissue. This is the zombie ant from, phenomenon from which the developers got some of the initial ideas. So I've had a good fortune to work in all these places around the world. Um, a lot of early work in Thailand, but now we do an awful lot of work in the Amazon. Uh, just, just to show you some images of the places I'm fortunate enough to, to work. Uh, Australia is particularly beautiful because you have the rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef at the same location. So in China, uh, highly fragmented, fragmented landscapes in Ghana, and then of course the Amazon. A lot of our work is, 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 is ecology, so we just go into the forest and we try to understand where and when and how we find these infections. 
So we just turn over the leaves and looking for these little ants which are either live or dead, typically dead, actually the leaf. So in true ecological fashion, we're just trying to represent the, uh, the pattern of spread. And when we do that, we can see that the ants, in, at least in Thailand, live up on the high canopy, about 20 meters above the forest floor, and then they come down to die on the underside of these leaves, and then a large stalk grows out of the back of the head, as you saw in the movie, and this is where the spores are being shot from. So the fungus, which has absolutely no intelligence, is controlling the ant's brain to have it die in a particular location, so it can shoot spores, and the cycle can continue. And the message of spores is something which is continuing as a team right through the promo material of the game and then right through the game itself, um, which, which I think is kind of cute. Um, this is just me in 60, uh, 60 feet up or 20 meters up in the, in, the, in the canopy and then down where that girl is sitting, where Sandra is sitting, is the location where the ants go down to die. So, of course, that's my day job. Um, as, a, as a scientist, we have a research lab, we, we, we go out, we study, we are very fortunate to sort of uncover some of these wonderful secrets of nature, but can this be real, a realistic scenario for a game? Could humans become infected? Well, here are some representative examples of human infections, which are both uh, gross and um, um, captivating. A gentleman infected by a bacterial infection, SARS in, in the underground in Mexico causing uh, distress, um, smallpox, uh, monkeypox, AIDS, and leprosy. So major events in human history have crippled society. In, in 1918, after the First World War, 20 million people were killed by uh, the, the flu. So we get the flu every single season, but at that time it was particularly virulent, and it particularly killed uh, young people and people in their prime, so it just really struck them down. So it killed more people in six months than the entire war had in four or five years. The Black Death, which I've also mentioned, one third to one half of all of Europe was killed by this bacterial infection. Absolutely catastrophic. Uh, the current AIDS epidemic, 35 million people have died. In Malawi, where these pictures are taken, 24% of the children are orphans because of this. And as many as 75 million people remain infected. <coughs> and since we're not going to find a cure anytime soon, these people are living on a, on, a, on, a, on a ticking clock. There are other parasites which also infect humans. This one is Toxoplasma, which is a, par par a parasite that lives inside the brain of rats. And what it does is it controls the behavior of rats, making them sexually attracted to cats, if such a thing can be imagined. <laughs> of course, rats run away from cats, but in this case, the parasite sits there and changes the limbic system of the brain. It sits there as a little ball or, or a cyst, sequestering dopamine and shooting that out. The consequence of that is that the rats, in blind tests, move towards cats, and that's where they get eaten, because the parasite wants to go from a rat into a cat. It controls mammalian brains. We can become infected, and it can control our brains. So if you have this infection, and roughly 27% of you have this infection at the moment, and you'll get it as you get older. If you're, if you're a woman and you get pregnant, the first thing the doctor will do is test for this infection, toxoplasma, because if you pick it up during pregnancy, it's a disaster. So if you, get the, if you have this infection, it's also doing to your brains what it's doing to rat brain, brains. And the consequence of that is you're two and a half times more likely to be in a car crash. So this is probably the second biggest killer on the planet after malaria. Now think about that next time you're flying an airplane and ask yourself the question, is the pilot infected? <laughs> it has a strong effect on national characteristics. Countries such as France have a huge rate of infection, as much as 66% because they like to eat so much raw food. Brazil has a very high level of infection. So it incre increases the national neuroticism. So people in France are more neurotic because of this parasite. Or so the story goes. <laughs> uh, rabies is a fascinating disease. All of the vampire ideas, um, all, all of the werewolves, they didn't just come out of the imagination. They have a basis in biology because once upon a time in Europe, dealing with rabbit dogs was a common existence. And you have to leave your house with a pointed stick because you would be attacked quite often. And if you were attacked, the virus would crawl into your bloodstream, crawl up to your brain, and turn you rabbit and crazy. And it still kills 50,000 people a year. These are parasites that do jump the species barrier and do control behavior. This idea of jumping the species barrier from animals to humans is called zoonosis. 60% of human diseases 
are zoonotic, zoonotic diseases. They come from the animals, AIDS, SARS, influenza, swine flu, bird flu, uh, black plague, toxoplasma, all of these diseases that jump from the animals. And they jump from the animals because we like eating animals and we like keeping them. And there's seven and a half billion of us and we need to have some food to eat. And consequently, we get all these diseases. If you've never heard of zoonosis, you will very quickly over coming years hear of it. It's going to enter the lexicon as we see more and more examples of society being <coughs> crippled because of our dependence on food that carry diseases. Lots of diseases come from bushmeat. It's an absolute disaster and, and not a morally correct thing to do to eat your evolutionary cousins, but that's what we're doing. And when we eat our, our cousins, we get diseases. We also outsource food production to poor farmers in China, and they have massive problems because they have to grow huge amounts of food for us, um, the consequence of which is that the parasites jump from being in the chicken into some poor Chinese guy who then goes home, kisses his wife, his wife goes to work in the city, she talks to somebody else, he goes to a, a hotel, the hotel to, um, to Toronto, as was the case in the SARS epidemic. And you wonder why it happened. It will happen because we want this sort of stuff. So most of the diseases that we get are, of course, viral diseases. So could it happen that the game is about fungal diseases? Could that happen? Could fungal diseases infect humans? Well, we don't eat ants, so it's unlikely that the, the fungus from the ants is going to infect humans. But there are fungal diseases which do infect humans. This is a rather, uh, is a very rare example uh, from South America. But all AIDS was very rare once upon a time in the 1900s in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was very rare. Now it's 75 billion people. That's not rare. This is the same disease. Uh, it's a fungal disease. It's a subcutaneous fungal disease growing underneath the skin. Uh, very common in South America. Not, uh, it affects people in South America, specifically South American tribal, tribal people. This one is from West Africa. Um, again, uncommon. But it's a fungal infection in a real person in West Africa, uh, growing subcutaneously, and then being able to spread from individual to individual. So I think organically, the gamers got a really good thing here when they when they when they had their descriptions of infections in humans, because it's it's not dissimilar to what really happens. So we create worlds and terrible diseases, and Naughty Dog does it for entertainment because it's tapping into that zeitgeist of, of a dystopia, the idea that we're likely to be tantalized and have the shit scared out of us. But of course, society is doing it in a disastrous way. So that's the more realist, realistic message here. You know, the first, the bubble of entertainment, this is something that's happening in real. So I was born in 1974, and it hasn't come out very well here, but that's 1974, and the graph continues right up to now 7.5 <coughs> billion. So since I was born, and some of you must be around the same age, since I was born, the population has literally doubled. And in the next 12 years, it will have to add another billion, another billion. And we might stop around about 10 billion. But we're crashing towards that at the moment. And consuming food, and the Chinese and the Indians also want to consume the same food we are. And we're creating these things. So in thinking about dystopian views, they're realistic in many ways. So let that... Um, be something to think about. <laughs> Thank you.